Hey, hey, are you okay? You call 911. You get an AED. Every 90 seconds in the United States, someone dies from sudden cardiac arrest. My name is Dr. Katherine Y. Brown, and I am the founder of Learn CPR America. I have also been a volunteer with the American Heart Association since I was 16 years old. I started Learn CPR America because lives were being lost in my community. Globally, cardiac arrest claims more lives than colorectal cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, influenza, pneumonia, auto accidents, HIV, firearms, and house fires combined. Alarming statistics like this led me on a mission to help save lives by teaching CPR. I opened up a freestanding CPR company on the south side of Chicago. I've led door knocking campaigns and traveled nationally and internationally teaching CPR because your zip code should not determine whether you live or die. Everyone should know CPR. If you can teach a child how to ride a bike, then I can teach them CPR. And so I did. I became known by many as the CPR lady because I carried a mannequin with me to parks, events, and my conversations at dinner tables always incorporated CPR. If anyone said, I don't know CPR, the conversation frequently followed with, I have a mannequin with me. Let me teach you right now. The question was simple. If your loved one went into cardiac arrest tonight, will you know what to do? And so from baby showers to family reunions, basketball courts to schools, and even standing on corners with a sign that said, honk if you know CPR, if you don't, Pull over and I will teach you. Oh, and then there's my walking into random biker bars, knocking on doors and housing projects. I fell in love with teaching CPR and the possibilities of what I was willing to do to help save lives was endless. I have said push, push while teaching more times than I've heard push while giving childbirth to my four children. In my world, CPR meant one thing, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. That was until November 5th, 2016, the day my mother passed in her sleep at home. Having to do CPR, but realizing that I could not bring her back was the hardest thing that I have ever done. When EMS arrived, I asked them to put the AED on so that I could hear the three words to confirm her transition. No shock advised. An AED won't shock when there is no rhythm. Her heart was not beating. She was gone. I had just talked with her three hours earlier and I was angry at myself. Why did you go to sleep, Catherine? If you would have stayed awake, you could have saved her. Was CPR no longer an option for her? I had to figure out how to revive myself. My heart was out of rhythm. I looked healthy on the outside but I wasn't okay. I withdrew from people, but I had a purpose. I had filled my space with meetings, organizations, and every second of the day was intentionally filled in overdrive so that I didn't have time to feel the pain. I had to pause and accept. Sometimes things are out of your control and it's all part of the greater plan. My life filled with teaching CPR with my mother and my family had unknowingly 
prepared me for this moment. And those three letters began to mean something different. In fact, it had led me to embody principles of courage, perseverance, and resilience. The entire time, the answer was right in front of me. For years, I always looked for what did not exist. I thought outside the box and sought to find the most unique opportunities to teach. I have always been grassroots and engaged in the community with the goal to serve the most vulnerable populations. What did this mean? I stepped into communities where I wasn't welcome. I was told no more times than I can remember. I advocated for people and worked tirelessly to empower them to help save lives, many times without a thank you. In the beginning, I fought with no budget to provide training to those who needed it because it was the right thing to do. I felt led to keep teaching people for free when I knew at the time I needed the funds to pay the lease on my office, but I taught for free. I sacrificed myself, my life, and my time to be of service to others. This may sound like you in some area of your life, and like many, you step into spaces where you are overlooked, overworked, overwhelmed, and just plain over it, <laughs> but you press forward because it is the right thing to do. CPR had taught me to be fearless. That's the moment when I realized that I had the tools to revive myself, to move past the pain of loss, to continue to be faced with obstacles, but fearlessly fight to overcome them even without having the one person who had always been in my corner. I had to use CPR to save my own life. All this time, I thought I had been teaching CPR, but it was CPR that had been teaching me. So now let me teach you. One common misconception is that cardiac arrest and a heart attack are the same thing, but they are not. A heart attack occurs when there is a blockage to the heart. Cardiac arrest is when the heart malfunctions and suddenly stops beating unexpectedly. To make it easier, a sudden cardiac arrest is an electrical problem. Heart stops. And a heart attack can be thought of as a circulation problem, blood flow. Similar to a heart attack, there are things in life that can block us from our purpose. Our lives can become filled with blockages of all shapes and sizes, such as people, organizations, meetings, social media, trauma, being told no, fear of failure, and the list goes on. Blockages can also occur when you create an image to your peers where you appear to be successful, content, and at peace. But in reality, you have given up a part of your real self to accomplish someone else's goal. Now, even if you look successful to others, sometimes there's a secret. That secret is, it's not your purpose. Three questions. Have you blocked your inner peace for external gratification? What things and people are blocking you from your purpose? Did you know that you are in the process of attaining everything that your heart desires? Today, I want you to be fearless. Remember, what may look like success to others isn't success if you create blockages by not completing the assignment that you were called to do. This is something that in many cases it can't be seen by others. It is something that happens inside of you. Mm -hmm. 
I have six principles. These are tools for you to put in your bag today because CPR is something that you may not think you need to know until you need to know it. Number one, analyze your situation. Is your scene safe? Six quick questions. Who's in your circle? Have you surrounded yourself with people who have your best intentions? Mm -hmm. Are they dream killers, dream stealers, or dream builders? Do they give you grace when you need help and give you feedback with compassion rather than hmm, confrontation? You know the people just to prove a point to make you look bad or hurt you. Have you evaluated the quality of your relationships? Do the people in your scene encourage you to be your best self? Do you have quality relationships? Do the people that you say matter most get the most valuable gift of you, your time? Remember, ask yourself, is the scene safe? Look around who's in your circle. Number two, check your pulse. Say these words out loud. Hey, are you okay? Put your hand on your heart and say it again like you mean it. Hey, are you okay? Being present in the moment is a reminder that you are here for a purpose. Take a deep breath. It's a horrible thing to do CPR on someone who doesn't need it. You may not need CPR today, but you must have the tools for when the need does come. And oh yes, the time will come. Everything is not a CPR event. So you must know how to assess the situation. If needed, begin with C, courage. Have the courage to answer this honestly. Move past the facade of life. You know, the one that makes you feel that you have to be perfect. You are perfectly imperfect. Your story is part of your journey. Don't let circumstances outside of your control define you. Don't let failure make you afraid. Failure is an opportunity to learn. Few get it right the first time. P, perseverance. When life doesn't go your way, and this can happen a lot, stay the course. The world is waiting on you and there will always be a void in the universe until you complete the assignment that only you were called to do. I'm here to tell you that you, yes, you are equipped with everything you need to be fearless. You are enough. So push, push hard and fast through adversity, push hard and fast through your fear and pain, Push hard and fast through anything that stands in your way. Push, push, push to our resilience. Set your intentions, focus, follow your heart, trust your intuition and keep going. Now, during this process, you may need to get your AED. This is the voice that says, analyzing heart rhythm, do not touch the patient. For us, it means avoid external distractions, AED. You don't have to seek external validation with your AED. You can learn to be proactive and not reactive when a shock in life happens so that you can get back to C P R with these six tools in mind, understand that CPR is a participatory process. I want you to do something with me right now. Do it with me right now. Put your hand on your heart and close your eyes. Yes. Close your eyes and just listen for a minute. In this moment, the heartbeat that you feel is the only one that matters. Why? You are here for a reason. Take a deep breath in. Be present. Slowly exhale. Check in with yourself. 
Take another deep breath. Honor yourself by going back and finding your breath of life. You are safe. You are okay. Now exhale and open your eyes. When you feel the weight of the world on your chest, when you're offbeat, pause, begin to proceed with CPR. Courage, perseverance, resilience, work your AED. Avoid external distractions from cell phones to meetings, organizations, and people that drain you. Remember your AED so that you don't give energy and investment of your time to things that don't matter. In closing, these are things that you must do. Establish scene safety. Check your pulse. If needed, begin CPR. I gave you three tools. CPR means courage, perseverance, resilience. Don't be afraid to get your AED. Avoid external distractions. When you put your hand on your heart, this is a reminder that you are alive. Take a moment to pause. You can't give more to others than you give to yourself. It's simple math. Death plus death equals death. Do not flatline in life. Develop your own personal space. Death plus CPR gives people a chance at survival. Well, you're here. You have a chance. Every day is a new day to have courage, perseverance, resilience. See, sometimes the life that you have to save is your own. And that is an idea worth sharing.